welcome back to Ron Stekob. And in this one, I'm going to be looking at the AIs, though the free ones anyway, the free AIs that we can use. So we're going to be looking at Google Bard, which is the one on my screen now, Chat GPT 3.5, the free version of that, Claude AI made by Anthropic. And finally, we're also going to be looking at Bing Chat. So let me start off by saying that these things that I'm going to be reviewing today or looking at today, these are not AIs and everyone's classing them or labeling them as AIs. This is not AI. These are simply large language models. These things, these large language models or these conversational language models, are, are they're definitely going to help us or help these people to eventually create AI. This is a good step in the right direction, but this in itself is not AI. This is not going to be an official test by any means. This is simply going to be me going over some of the features I like from each thing and telling you maybe which one you should have a look at. And to be fair, I think everyone should try all of them. They're amazing. They make you work so much faster. They have so many nice features. So let's jump in. First, we have Google Bard, which is obviously created by Google. It says it's an experiment right now, but I've been using this for a good three or four months and it is absolutely amazing. That's the first one. Next, we have ChatGPT 3.5. And there's also a chat GPT-4, but obviously I don't want to pay for anything. That's why I'm sticking to the free versions of everything. Chat GPT 3.5, in my opinion, is still very, very solid. And again, on the left of this, this is where I have all my previous conversations. And it's, for me, it's mainly been about networking stuff, cloud architect stuff, so IT stuff. And this one, same thing. This is chat GPT 3.5 and we have Claude AI. Now, for me, I think Claude kind of came onto the scene without me paying much notice to it. It was created by the people who made chat GPT 3.5. So some of those people actually left that company and went and created Claude AI. And finally, we have Bing Chat, which is owned by Microsoft, but they integrate chat GPT 4 into their systems. So let's go ahead and ask this thing the same questions and see which one gives what I would class as the best output. I've got my first question ready and I'm going to use Google Bard first. I'm going to copy. I've copied my question already. I'm going to simply paste it here and it says explain. Let me start a new chat actually. Explain what a content delivery network is and I'm going to show you some of the features that Google Bard has to give you a better response. So I'm going to search. One of the things it does that the others don't do, it gives you all the text at once. It doesn't write line by line, which looks really cool but is sometimes very slow. It takes a few seconds and gives you a large chunk of text all at once, which could be quite cool. Now, as you can see, this is a lot of information to read through, even though some of it might be repeated. It's a lot. Down here, we can do good response. We can do bad response. We Before I click on modify, I'm going to show you modify. That's the most important part. We can share and export and we should be able to export this to Google Docs or to draft an email, which is really, really cool in my opinion. And also, if I can double check this response against Google, so it will go through and it will highlight things that can be found on other websites. So for example, if that sentence there can be found somewhere else on another web, ah, it's perfect. That sentence was found somewhere else. All of this information is, is somewhere else on the internet and it will tell me exactly where it is. So this is a really cool feature. So if you think you have an answer and you're not entirely sure if the thing is correct, you can simply click on that option there and it will go and check all of Google's cached web pages to see where the information is. For example, I clicked on the very first line and look, it told me the Amazon website. I can 1 million percent trust the Amazon website for this because Amazon is one of the companies that actually does cloud computing. And if Amazon says this is what a content delivery network is, they were one of the founders, not necessarily the founders, but they're one of the biggest players in cloud computing. So I can trust their answer. All right. So let's go back down again. And down here, it says modify response. Still, this is a lot of text to read. I want this simple and I want this short. When I go to modify response, I have all these options here. I can click on shorter, longer, simpler, more casual or more professional. I would only typically go more professional if I'm asking it to help me write an email or something similar. I would go shorter because I don't like reading big blocks of text. It doesn't help me retain stuff. I am very okay with reading bullet points and understanding everything that's there. If you're somebody who likes to read a whole block of text with examples, then that's fine. You can choose the option that suits you best. So have a look at this again. That's, I won't even say 20, 20 ish lines of text. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go shorter. 
it's going to take two, three, four seconds and it's going to spit out again another answer, but much, much more concise. Here we go. Look at that. That's a massive, massive difference. It has all the same information as in I can understand or learn what this is without having to read an entire paragraph. And let's try a different one. Let's try simpler as well. This might be shorter. So if I click on simpler, I'm not going to choose all the options. I'm only showing you a few of them. If I click on simpler, it should. Yeah, there we go. Not shorter, but it should be easier to read. So if you're someone learning a new concept, you might want to use simpler first and then you might want to use shorter afterwards. The thing I don't like about this is that it's done post search, which is, in my opinion, is not the best way to do this. Now, again, I am no software guru. I'm no amazing programmer, but I think it would be best if before you actually start typing the answer, it asks you or it, it, it has options here that says all of this. I want a short answer, a longer answer, a simpler answer, a more casual answer or, or a more professional answer so that you don't have to then come and do this afterwards. Because when I'm learning, when I want to know something, I only want the short and simple answers because I can then read it, understand it and be able to explain it in my own words if I have um, the information broken down in the simplest form but that's just me some people like to read large blocks of hard text that's not me so that there is google bard in a nutshell chat gpt 3.5 this is one of the earlier ones this is one of the probably the one that most people know we can get chat gpt 4 as well but i'm not going to go for chat gpt 4 i'm only going to stick to 3.5 i'm going to ask it the same question i asked google and look at how it's going to give me the answer so i've copied my question already i'm going to paste it there and i'm going to just press enter. It's going to start typing straight away. There's no delay. It types it one line at a time. This, I do have to admit, looks very nice on the eyes in terms of it's nice to see this, this thing just scroll along the page. What I don't like is that it's kind of slow compared to Google Bard. It would take me a much longer time to find all of this information on Google or on whatever search engine I'm using, but it gives me everything I need and more or less the same as the Google Bard option. It does not have any features on there for me to shorten the answer or simply, the most I can do is like it or, or, or dislike it and that's it. I have to then search and say, can you explain it in a simpler way? Whereas Google has that built in. So I can now come and say, can you please explain it in a simpler way? So it is contextually aware. It's not gonna start searching for this sentence. It's going to remember that the last thing I typed in was explain what a content delivery network is. And then it's going to start explaining that same thing in a simpler way. And there we go. Much shorter, much easier to read. It does have the same features as Google Bard. But again, it takes you an extra step. Whereas Google, it's simply clicking, choosing an option and it redoes everything for you. So very, very similar. It does a line at a time. Google does the whole block of text at once, but it works and it's really, really fast compared to going and Googling every single thing and trying to understand every single thing. So chat GPT 3.5 there. Next on the list, we have Claude AI, and this is made by some people over at Anthropic. These are people who left chat GPT earlier on, I believe it was in 2021, and started their own thing. So... So you can see I've got some questions here, but I'm going to start a new chat just so it doesn't at least try to use anything from that one. And I'm going to paste my question in here. And again, look at what it does. It starts typing the answer straight away. The user interface of this looks a lot cleaner than that of ChatGPT 3.5. I would say it's about the same speed in terms of the information uh, being put on screen. Not as fast as Google Bard because, again, Google Bard gives you everything all at once. This is okay. This is kind of the middle ground. I think ChatGPT 3.5 looks really ugly and outdated. Google Bard looks, I would say, more modern. And this is kind of in the middle. The colors I don't like, but hey, this, that's just me nitpicking. And at this stage, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. And again, this is also contextually aware. So I can ask it the same question I ask ChatGPT. Can you explain this? Actually, let me just copy and paste the question from here just so I don't type anything wrong. So copy that one. I'm going to paste it here and let's get that question in a simpler way. A simp Well, the answer in a simpler form. This for me is much better. I wish this was the option I could have chosen at first. Bullet points, straight to the point. 
it's still a lot of information but it's easy to digest because it's in bullet point form still sentences still make sense but because it's in bullet point form it's just easier for me to digest this is microsoft bing chat it uses chat gpt4 which makes chat gpt4's sale price of i think 20 dollars or 20 pounds a month really really hard to swallow how do i want to use this just like i did the others let's go to a new topic and let's paste that question i had earlier which was explain what a content delivery network is i'm going to go ahead and press enter and as you can see on this a bit slower than the others but again it starts typing straight away and what i do love about this one i don't think google does it by default it starts to give you references straight away so whilst it's typing it's giving you references and you can always go on to those references and actually find more information this is from cloudflare.com that's a content delivery network uh, service uh, there's also ibm wikipedia i wouldn't trust so much even though wikipedia has very very good information but because people can edit i wouldn't really take this as it is you can go to wikipedia scroll to the very end and you can see the references that those people use to write the wikipedia article but i digress here we have content delivery network this is a good answer very looks shorter than the others again I would say ChatGPT 3.5, Cloud AI, and Bing Chat are roughly the same speed. Google is the fastest one because, again, it doesn't do line by line. It just gives you everything at once. Here, you can also like, dislike, or you can copy as well. So you can copy the entire block of text. You can export it as a Word document, a PDF, or a text file. This, I believe, is quite useful. I wish they did have more file options here, but I guess these are the main document file types. Makes sense. I can also share it and I can continue on phone. So if I log into Bing Chat on my mobile phone, it will just save all of this, which is really good because I do have um, Bing Chat on my mobile phone. But in any case, let's see if the second question, let's see what it gives us. I'm going to say, explain, no. Can you please explain it in a simpler way? I'm going to press enter and see what it gives. Again, it starts straight away. Another good thing about this one, ChatGPT 3.5 and Bing Chat, you can stop responding. So if you're thinking, hmm, this is not really the answer I want, you can click stop responding and it will stop, cut out, and you can then start typing your new question straight away. Very, very useful. The only two that you can do voice input with are Google Bard and Bing Chat, which makes it super, super good. So let's see if it actually works. I'm screen recording now, so this might not work. What are the three large cloud companies in the UK? Searching for three large cloud companies in the UK. The three largest cloud companies in the UK are Amazon Web Services, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. These companies provide cloud infrastructure services, which include computing power, storage, and databases, among other things. AWS is the market leader in cloud infrastructure services in the UK, followed by Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. I hope that helps. Perfect. This is what I wanted to show you. No other AI thing, no other chat model does this. Google does have voice input as well. So let's ask the same question. Uh, what did I ask again? Uh, what are the three large cloud companies in the UK? So let's go back to Google and I'm going to say, what are the large three cloud companies in the UK? Probably said it wrong, but hey. And then you have to press enter. So it doesn't know that I've stopped asking the question. It's just still there listening, which is probably okay for most people. It's not going to be an issue for most people, but the way that Bing Chat did it, it listened and realized, okay, he's not speaking anymore. So let me go ahead and get the information that he wants. And it also reads it to me. That part is the feature that's like, wow. With this, if I want it read to me, I will have to highlight it. And I have a Google Chrome plugin. I think it's that one that actually reads stuff to me. And I prefer to listen to things rather than reading it myself. I can close my eyes and listen to an entire book and remember most of what I need to remember, which is really good. So I think for me, I would say based on features, based on looks. Oh, I didn't speak about the look of Bing Chat. Look, Bing Chat looks better to me than uh, Google Bard at the moment. Blue, this kind of blue isn't my favorite, but it's just really bright, really light, really simple. And it has the option if I start a new chat, I'll show you new topic. It has the option to do creative, balanced and precise. The thing, the, exactly the thing I wanted in um, 
Google Bard. Because in Google Bard, you have to re-ask the question and to make it simpler when you press the option. So I would have to go to here, for example, and click on modify response and then choose the thing I want. Whereas with Bing Chat, I can tell it how I want the answer before I start asking the question. So I can say more precise and it will give me the shortest possible answer, hopefully with all the information I have. Um, in any case, I think these services should not be classed or labeled as AI. It is very, very misleading. And as someone who understands computer systems in general, calling everything AI is very bad for business because people are going to start associating this kind of AI with what they see in maybe Terminator or whatever other movies they've seen. Some people are genuinely going to be scared of it. This is not AI. This is simply a service that Google has, um, ChatGPT has, Cloud has, Microsoft has. They have gone around the world. They've scraped information from different websites. They've scanned websites. They've scanned books. They've scanned articles and they've collated that information. So when I ask it a question, whereas if I type that same question I did in Google, uh, not that one, it's gonna be this one, explain what a content delivery network is. I will get the answer, but look at this. I got 256 million results in 0 0.7 seconds, which is very good. I can go ahead and look through all of this and the first website might not have the information. The second one might not have it. The third, whereas with the language models, the large language models, LLMs, the, it will go and grab the information from all of these pages and present it to me in a somewhat readable format without me having to go and research everything myself. That's what I love about this. So I'll stop it there. I will do another video on this at some point. It might just be on the top two. And for me, I would say the top two are Bing Chat and Google Bard. Bing Chat has the feature for me to dictate and for it to read the answer back to me. So this is perfect as a large language model. I can have a conversation with it. I do have to keep clicking on the use microphone option and then it will listen and give me the answer. But it's better than me having to uh, click on it, tell it what I want, then press enter. Then where it feels more conversation like with Bing Chat. In any case, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe.